Hello, hello, I'm Breton, one of our MCAT tutors here at Inspira Advantage, where we help students get into med school and other professional programs. Today, we're gonna to talk about three important systems found in a circulatory system, the bicarbonate buffer system, blood type, and the basics of coagulation. Let's jump on in. The bicarbonate buffer system is a key component of the human body's pH regulation. It works by maintaining the balance of carbonic acid and bicarbonate ions in the blood. Carbonic acid is formed when carbon dioxide dissolves in water, and it can be converted into bicarbonate ions through the action of the enzyme carbonic anhydrase. The bicarbonate buffer system helps maintain a steady pH of 7.4 in the blood. If the pH begins to rise, the bicarbonate ions will neutralize the excess acid, preventing the pH from becoming too high. If the pH begins to fall, the carbonic acid will disassociate, releasing hydrogen ions and keeping the pH from becoming too low. Through Le Chatelier's principle, this will decrease the amount of hydrogen in the blood. And we know that pH is just a measure of hydrogen, so if we remove that hydrogen, we're going to have a higher pH or less acidic blood. So how does the body use this system in a practical way? When the respiratory rate increases, more carbon, more carbon dioxide is exhaled. So we're going to see the amount of carbon dioxide in the system decrease. And through Le Chatelier's principle then, this will decrease the amount of H+. And this will therefore increase blood pH. Because you want to remember that pH is just the literal measurement of the amount of hydrogen in the blood. It's the negative log of hydrogen. So as blood pH goes up, that means we have a decrease in the amount of hydrogen. In summary, an increased respiration will increase blood pH. On the other hand, when the respiratory rate decreases, this is going to cause a buildup of CO2 in the blood, which will lead to a increase in hydrogen ions and therefore a decrease in blood pH. If left uncorrected, this can lead to acidosis, and the body has several mechanisms to correct this. The first being, well, just increase your respiratory rate, or you could also activate the renal system to start excreting more H+. You could even start by increasing the activity of carbonic anhydrase to speed up the conversion of carbonic acid to bicarbonate. But the MCAT is 99% of the time gonna test you on, can you apply Le Chatelier's principle to this system? It's important to note that the respiratory system works in coordination with other systems, such as the renal system, to maintain the body's pH. The bicarbonate buffer system is just one component of this process, and changes in respiratory rate can have a ripple effect on other systems as well. Therefore, it's important to consider the overphysiological state. Therefore, it's important to consider the overall physiological state of the body when evaluating the effects of change in respiratory rate on the bicarbonate buffer system, as well as the pH of the blood. You want to remember that the MCAT will complicate these questions. So it's not as simple as saying decreased respiration means increase in acid. You need to make sure you take in the whole question. Now let's move on to blood type. Blood type is another important aspect of the circulatory system. Blood type refers to the classification of blood based on the presence or absence of certain antigens on the surface of red blood cells. These antigens can be proteins or sugars, and they are inherited from our parents. The most important blood groups are A, B, AB, and O. Type A blood has A antigens presenting on the surface of the red blood cells, and type B blood has B antigens. Type AB blood has, you guessed it, both type A and B antigens. How about type O? Well, type O looks like a zero, which means that it does not have any antigens. Another important factor in blood typing is the RH factor, which stands for rhesus. The rhesus factor refers to the presence or absence of a protein called the D antigen on the surface of red blood cells. So if somebody is RH positive, they have the D antigen. If they are RH negative, they do not have it. So a person's blood type can then be described as A+, plus, B-, minus, AB+, plus, O-, minus, etc. Let's do a quick concept check here. What type of antigens would you expect to see on an AB positive blood person? Well, it's presenting A, it's presenting B, and it's presenting the RH D factor. This would be presenting antigens for everything. Blood type is important because it determines a person's suitability as a donor or recipient in a blood transfusion. For example, someone with A blood can only receive A or type O blood, while somebody with type AB blood could receive any blood type. Now, type O negative blood is considered the universal donor because it can give blood to anyone without a risk of transfusion reaction. On the other hand, type AB blood, AB positive blood is considered the universal recipient. Well, why does this make sense? We just said that AB positive blood 
presents antigens for A, B, and RH. So this means it can take any blood without causing an immune reaction, whereas type O negative blood will react to everyone. Well, as anyone who is O negative will react to all types of blood being transfused if it's not O negative. They will have an immune reaction because the body isn't used to recognizing the A, B, or RH factor. Now, let's briefly speak about coagulation, also known as blood clotting. This is a process that helps to stop bleeding by forming a clot, or thrombus, over the injured blood vessel. This is a very complex process involving a cascade of chemical reactions that ultimately leads to the formations of a clot. The coagulation pathway is the bane of many a medical student. Luckily for the MCAT, all you need to understand is that when the endothelial lining of a blood vessel is damaged, the collagen and tissue factor underlying the endothelial cells become exposed and the coagulation cascade is triggered. A couple other things you also need to know is that the protein prothrombin is catalyzed into the protein thrombin and that fibrogenin is the precursor to fibrin. And both of these proteins are promoting, you guessed it, blood coagulation. Understanding these three concepts is important for the MCAT. Thank you so much for watching our video of the key systems of the circulatory system, and I'll see you next time.